Hello, in today's video we will talk about panels and layouts in Tab Red Edge editor applications. Uh, first of all, what are the editor applications in Tab Red Edge? When you navigate to an asset collection in Tab Red Edge, and here I'm going to a taxonomy type asset collection, you get presented with its content in a view where you could browse the content, you could modify the content, and, and so on. And this is called an editor application. Editor applications consist of panels that are organized in layouts. For example, here in the taxonomy, um, I have three panels. The three panel for the taxonomy concept, then behind it, I have nested the concept search panel. And then on the right, I have a form that displays whatever I will select in the panel on the left. This arrangement of panels is set, is saved as a layout. And this is a default layout for the, uh, for the taxonomy type asset collections. Each type of an asset collection has its own default layout. Some of the collections have the same default. And there is also alternative layouts. For example, I could switch to a single form layout, which will display just a form, or I could switch to a Sparkle query layout, which is useful if you're going to uh, run queries either directly or run uh, queries from the, from the library of queries. So let's go back to the default. I could also bring in other panels or rearrange panels that I have on, on the screen here. For example, let's say I am interested in history. So I'm going to bring a change history panel and I could position it any number of ways. Uh, for example, I could position it like this. And now I have a different layout. I could potentially save it, or even if I don't save it, if I uh, exit from here and let's go, let's say go to another taxonomy, my most recent layout will be remembered. So what I will be shown is whatever my most recent view was. But once I reset, once I reset it to a different layout the arrangement that I just made disappears. If this arrangement is important to me, let's bring it back. I could save it as a new layout. There is a save current layout button right here, and I have a few options. Uh, I could first name my layout, and I have to name my layout if I'm going to save it. So let me call it three form and history. I could save it as a private layout just for myself, or if I think it's useful for my colleagues as well, I could make it shared. I could decide what is the scope of it. Is it just for taxonomy or is it for all types of asset collections that I work with? And then I could also make this a default for myself for all taxonomies. And that would replace uh, my current default. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to save it as tree form uh, and, and history. And my default remains the same as it currently is. So here I'm going back to it. And now if I want to uh, switch to the layout I had previously, I have it available under layouts. So um, how you would typically use uh, this feature, you would organize the panels that um, align with how you would like to, to work, and then you save it as a layout for yourself. For example, there is a single form layout as I've already showed previously for users that typically interact with Tab Red Edge through Search the Edge 
feature, it may be useful for them to set this as their default view for all asset collection types. And this way, if they, um, let's say, go through search the edge, and then uh, click on uh, one of the results, they will get presented with just a simple form view like this. I will show you another arrangement of panels that I find useful, this time for a data asset collection. For data asset collections, I like to use a view that starts with a hierarchical panel, panel called asset hierarchy. And I'm going to remove search because I could always switch to the search. There is a, there is a search view. And you could see this useful view that shows the database and, and sh shows tables and it shows columns. So let's say I like this view and I am going to save it as a default for this type of collections. Now, if I'm going to go to another asset collection that is uh, for data assets, I'm going to see the same view by default. Let's go, for example, to a data asset collection that contains some sample data sets. And I continue to have this view. But in this case, it presents a hierarchy of data sets. The important thing to know about this uh, asset hierarchy panel is that initially you may need to set up the root of um, what kind of asset types that it will be displaying. So in this case, it's set up to data sets. And once it's set up, it will remember this uh, setting for you. And also a manager, as they create this asset collection, they could set it up uh, for every, every user as a main class of the search panel or a root class of the class hierarchy, of the root, root shape of the asset hierarchy panel. So it can also be set up here. And then this is set up for all the users that will use uh, this type of asset collection. Now, another option with layouts is that, uh, yes, you could save it and, and it is available. But let's say someplace, uh, sometimes in the future, you decide that this layout is no longer useful. You could go to the available layout panel. And here you see all available layouts. and if one of the layouts is no longer interesting for you, you could, uh, you could delete it. Thank you for watching this video.